Welcome everybody, um, my name's Kevin, I work here at Gaslight, uh, really glad that you guys uh, made it out here today and I just want to remind you that we do this every first Wednesday of the month at noon, free lunch in traditional uh, school cafeteria style. Um, next month we've got a really cool talk by the company Bra uh, Brave Berlin, they are the designers and developers behind L L Luminosity, which if you haven't heard of is like the super cool thing they do over in Washington Park every year. So they're going to be here next month talking about all the tech that goes into uh, making Luminos Luminosity happen. So check out that next month. Um, we have lots of extra food, so if you feel like you want some more of the amazing meatloaf and mashed potatoes, just head right, right on back and our fabulous lunch ladies will Figure, we'll make you make you happy. All right, so um, Sharon Young is going to be talking about iSpace, which is a uh, STEM learning accelerator. Or yeah. sounds good. She's going to tell you <laughs> all about it, and it's going to be awesome. So thanks for coming. All right. <clears throat> all right. Well, thank you for coming, or I should say we were very happy that Gaslight had invited us um, to your uh, tech cafeteria so that we could introduce you to iSpace. Has anybody heard of iSpace? Yay, one, okay. <laughs> Can I ask you in what reference? Well, as a matter of fact, we had it this past Saturday. We have an annual space day um, at, at Scarlet Oaks is where our home is in Sharonville. And um, they've graciously given us some classrooms and we pretty much branch out into a much greater space in their facility to host space day. And on Saturday, we had about 2,300 people show up. So it's a very big event for us. We are a nonprofit organization. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. So we are called iSpace the STEM Learning Place. Um, hopefully all of you know what STEM means, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, it, and our acronym stands for Interactive STEM Programs and Career Exploration. We're always trying to get um, kids and uh, young adults thinking about STEM careers. And we, our little tagline is we make learning exciting. We bring in hands-on activities to help um, maybe teachers and um, you know, instead of just book learning, we make it fun what they're learning. So again, we are a nonprofit organization started in 2001 by a, a former math teacher. She realized that there was a lot of, or there was a lot lacking in um, STEM uh, activities to help supplement her curriculum. So when she retired from teaching, this is what she started was iSpace. And again, we're located in Sharonville. Um, what do we do? We use space and aeronautics as uh, themes, um, kind of like the umbrella to be able to teach different STEM topics. It could be force in motion. It could be a topic on polymers. It could be um, uh, robotics, which you're going to see some uh, up here that we have on our table as a display. It could be rocketry. And by the way, at the end of uh, my talk, if you want to shoot off some straw rockets, you can design a few. I have a couple examples that kids have made. Uh, changing up variables with those and um, we've got table launchers and we also have these big floor launchers so yes <laughs> safety glasses of course too so I have all the supplies you need if you feel like hanging around and doing that so our big thing though is to inspire kids okay um, we are accredited by the uh, Better Business Bureau. As a matter of fact, we did get their Torch Award for Ethics in Business. Um, we have a lot of partners in uh, education, industry, and institutions, and we do serve um, thousands of students um, every year, and um, adults also. You'll see some of those here, too. So um, some people say we're the best kept secret in Cincinnati. As you can see in this room of a lot of uh, tech oriented people, only one person has heard of us. So 
Uh, let's see here. Oh, come on. There we go. We were named um, in the Family Magazine, the winner in 2003, and I don't have on here, 2004 Best Summer Camps. So just keep that in mind. If you have young ones at home or, or know of any children in the neighborhood, you know, nieces, nephews, um, we have some fantastic summer camps. I do have a flyer up here if you're interested to see some of the different programs from preschool all the way up through high school that we offer uh, students. So, and here's just a few cute pictures using a lot. Um, uh, we use a lot of Lego in our education. Um, the children down there in the left-hand corner are using some Lego engineering kits. We use a lot of um, educational kits by Lego that kids do not have access to at the Lego store. They can certainly go online and, and purchase them, but most kids don't have the types of Lego, the pieces that we do. Um, gears, levers, pulleys, you know, learn about simple machines. We do rocketry. Um, Little boy in the upper right is playing with a hydraulics um, robotic arm. So um, we do a lot of after school programs. We're, we're in many, many schools throughout the, um, the fall and then going into the spring. And we take uh, almost every program on the road except for one and I'll, I'll explain that one to you too in just a few minutes. And um, I think I've got a picture of that very soon here. Field trip destination, here we go. Uh, as a matter of fact, right now at, at iSpace we have a fifth grade class um, that is there for an I mission. Our I missions are programs where teachers have described it as 100% of the students are engaged 100% of the time. And we're talking a two and a half to three hour program. They come to us and, and, and pre what they did in the classroom, we sent them a application and kids apply for their job. So they can be um, engineers, life support um, analysts, um, geologists, DATCOM officers, um, navigation, medical officers, and remote control. They get to uh, do some robotic arms. We throw in emergencies. We tell them that this is a simulation of having moon bases. And the kids talk to each other over smart boards. And th otherwise, they're pretty well isolated from one another. Sometimes our emergency is the visual has gone out. And they have to communicate only orally on how to solve the problem. So it's a, a really good problem solving skills. We also have used that. Um, I missioned for uh, corporate programs too. So school outreach, we do go into the classrooms and work with teachers um, supplementing, again, their curriculum. Uh, they don't have the funds to pay for a classroom set of Lego or uh, these, these different ro robots. Um, at iSpace, we have, I think, over 30 NXT, Lego NXT robots, and EV3s, I think we're maybe around 25 and expecting to get more through some grant money. Um, so we, we can take those things to the classroom. And we also have programs, let's say, on light um, that fifth grade might be um, doing you know, this particular year in their science standards. Or like I said, force in motion. Um, we have kids running down cars, down ramps, and going over different surfaces and learning about friction and, and um, motion and gravity and things like that. So uh, teacher professional development. Um, We've had this going on for several years now, and just to let you know, I have a bunch of flyers up here. I bet all of you have a teacher in your life, you know? And if it's not your, your kids in school, then maybe you, you just know somebody who, who is a teacher, and we have um, two really fantastic programs. One of them is totally free. It's what we call our STEM Academy. And that uh, this year is going to be on third grade teachers. Third grade teachers can come. They will walk away with a kit of over $100 in supplies that they can then use in their classroom. And um, it is over the course of, I believe there will be about five evenings. We feed them, uh, we give them dinner, and then we give them a PD, and they get CEUs for it. They love it. Uh, 
The, also, we're going to have a STEM educator experience. We are working with one of our partners, the Cincinnati Observatory Center, and they are going to host Friday night, and the teachers will come, get fed dinner, and then they um, get to, you know, a tour of the observatory and see what, what programs can the observatory do for their classrooms. And then on Saturday, they'll come to iSpace at Scarlet Oaks, and we will host workshops for the teachers from about a 9 to 3 uh, program. So, um, corporate programs. We've had um, several different companies come and or or we go out and do it for them. Where you know how you've maybe you've been involved in a corporate program on a Saturday or something where maybe you've done like the low ropes course at a park and you do a lot of team building and things. Basically, we provide the fun activity. Instead of low ropes courses, we have uh, groups will come in and do robotics or rocketry, or we've even had them come in and do an I mission before. So um, it's really good for groups that you know maybe um, aren't working cohesively, or maybe your company is going through some revamping and mixing people up, and this is a good way to introduce them to. So we can help out with that. Um, these are some of the ways that we, we serve our community. Um, we do expose kids who maybe have um, no other chance of ever playing with a Lego robot because of the, the cost involved. Um, roughly each, each robot is, is $350 to about $450. And again, us being a nonprofit, we get them through uh, grant money. But you know, most kids don't have access to that. So we're, we're able to give, give kids those kinds of experiences. Um, and we're always trying to touch on that career. You know, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, we hope sometimes that we might hear kids say, I want to be a computer software analyst. You know? I want to be um, a robot arm or a surgeon who, who's going to do, um, you know, uh, surgery by robotics. So um, we, we do seem to um, uh, I say really help the kids who traditional classroom settings they have trouble with. Again, it's because, you know, you probably remember what's one of the best ways that you ever learned is to do it. And so by providing some of these really cool um, hands-on experiences for kids, it really helps reinforce maybe the book learning. So um, how can you inspire the future? This is one way. I have a few pictures here of kids that are on robotics teams. And we have a lot of adults that are involved in that. Uh, iSpace hosts the um, first tech challenge Ohio competition at Scarlet Oaks. We've been doing it for about uh, at least eight years, I believe. Um, this other picture is some kids that are actually only six to nine years old. That's called Junior First Lego League. We hold an expo for those kids. It's non-competitive. And... Um, the one in the, the lower corner there, lower left, is um, called First Lego League, and that's for 9 to 14 years of age. And we host a robotics tournament for them also. These things happen in January and February. Many kids who come to the Cincinnati um, robotics competitions actually go on to the state level because we are like a qualifying tournament, and from us, they would go to state, and from state, they go on to um, the world competition. And so we need people like you who can maybe be uh, mentors for those teams. A lot of the teams have already been formed at this point. Um, they can start uh, forming in, in May. And the school teams are all probably forming like right now and um, really about probably about a month ago, I guess. And so now they're actually going through the process of practicing and, and working on their robot. And it is more, more than just a robot. It also is they have a problem that they have to solve, and they have to um, give presentations in front of judges and things like that. So it helps these kids in a variety of ways. And, um, and many of these kids do go on to be um, your future um, engineers and scientists and things like that. So ways that you can help, you could always be a coach, 
a team mentor. A lot of times you have a parent who says, I'll coach the team, but I don't understand the software. I don't understand where, you know, how to help the kids with the hardware problems. How do we make an attachment to do this particular challenge on the competition field? And that's where maybe you guys could really help out. So um, certainly sponsoring a team, if you work for a company that would like to have your logo on the back of a t-shirt and buy the t-shirts for the kids, they love to dress up and wear team t-shirts for the competitions. So, and of course, iSpace is always looking for, since we host these tournaments, people like you to be referees and judges. And it's, it's a really fun, uh, fun way to get involved. And we are involved with some companies um, that help fund us. And Ethicon Endosurgery has been a big help with us. They were um, also one of the exhibitors at Space Day on Saturday, showing some kids how, how do you do um, you know, surgery and, and being able to look onto a screen, what's happening inside the human body you know, with laparoscopy instruments and things like that. So the kids got to play around with that. Um, it just lets them see the possibilities. This is just one picture that I grabbed real quick. We haven't uh, put them on our website yet from our Space Day event. But like I said, we had 2,300 people come through our doors. And that we, um, we broke a record. We were just under 2,000 last year, so we were pretty blown away this year. We, it also helped that we had a uh, VXU and a CET commercial that they helped uh, fund us for so that we could get the word out and a couple articles in the Cincinnati Enquirer too. So you can make a difference in these kids' lives. You know, these young people, you know, it, you probably hear all the time about how engineers, there's so many of them that are retiring in the next 10 years, 10 to 20 years. And the young kids that are in classrooms today, you know, we need to get them interested and get them thinking about uh, STEM careers. So that is our future. If you could go to um, ispacescience.org, that is our website. You can find out all these different um, things that you can volunteer for. We put on, like I said, all these different programs. If you'd like to assist in a classroom, you know, um, you grab my card and give me a call. We're always looking for, for additional people. We are a small organization with only about uh, seven employees, but we, we hire a lot of what we call ad hoc people, you know, as needed. A lot of them are retired teachers or a mom who has young kids. She's got a teaching degree, but, but you know, she's at home and just wants a part-time job. And so we, we call on these folks then to, to take our outreach. Oh, you want to do an after-school program at this particular, you know, oh, it's not far from your home. And so they'll do things like that for us. Um, of course, the first robotics tournaments, uh, Space Day, we had over 70 volunteers for that. That won't come around again until next October, but it's just something to think about. We're also very involved in Science Olympiad. Uh, it's been out at um, UC in Blue Ash, that branch, for several years, and this year we are moving it to uh, Xavier University. They've been very gracious to um, work with us, and we're going to be um, hosting that in March. And if you have any special skills or talents, which I'm sure you do, if you look at our website, we could use some help. <laughs> so, you know, don't, you will not offend us if you call up and say, hey, I've, I've got some special skills that maybe I could bring to your organization and help you guys out. We would, we would thoroughly enjoy that. And also, we are, a, again, a nonprofit that's run by a board of trustees. So we um, have lots of different committees. Um, you know, marketing, if you have any expertise in, in marketing, that is, that is one of the things that we are really trying to beef up because a lot of people don't know who we are. They don't know we're around. So um, anyway, so that is the end of my speech. So if you would like to come up and take any of these flyers, we have, if you've got um, uh, kids at home, if you want to take one of our programs here, let them take this home to their teacher. And it has all our different programs. I said all of them are, um, uh, we have a van also that we take our programs, uh, we call iSpace to go. All of them can go on the road into classrooms, into libraries, churches, um, scout groups. Uh, we've been to nursing homes, all different kinds of groups. The only thing we can't take is that I mission because it uses a lot of the technology that we have in our um, smart classrooms. Um, we have corporate brochures here. Um, 
again, STEM Academy, if you have any teachers who would like to get some, some free you know, um, uh, product and be able to use in their classroom, um, you may take that. I have pens and pencils. Take them, take them, so you'll remember us. Um, if you want to play around with uh, EV3, the new, this is the newest Lego robot. There is a demo program on here, and we can have it run on the floor. Um, this is one of the youngest Lego products um, of robotics that they have. This one gets tethered to a laptop and kids as young as second and third grade learn very basic programming, kind of drag and drop, and be able to get all of the models. This is just the monkey, um, but they get models to move and make sounds. So they love that. Um, and this is just a little sampling of what we do. We are much more than just Lego products. So, and if you take one of our brochures or our summer camp thing, you'll see all the different things that we do. We do try and bring in literature whenever we can also. So kind of bring in still that um, language arts component of it. And if you guys would like to come up and make a rocket, a straw rocket and shoot one off, go right ahead. So thank you very much. So. The ice face. Good, 1236. Anybody have any questions? No? If you want to come up and talk to me or grab a card, feel free. And so thank you.